the quantity that tells you how fast something rotates when you apply a torque is the rotational inertia. It's the, you can think of it as the mass for rotational motion, not literally the mass, but the effective mass, basically the inertia for rotational motion. It depends on mass and how it is distributed with, my definition is getting a little long here, with respect to the, oh my god, axis of rotation. I usually try to trim them down a little bit. That one got out of hand. Okay. Its street name is moment of inertia. So College Board um, likes rotational inertia, but you'll see it referred to as the moment of inertia often. And the symbol is big I. Okay. The formula that gets us from a torque to an angular acceleration looks a lot like Newton's second law. It's sort of Newton's second law for rotation. If we take the sum of all the torques, they equal the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Torque equals I alpha, just like F equals MA. And torque is, of course, a vector, and alpha is a vector. I, the moment of inertia, is a scalar, because it's acting like the mass. It's not, it doesn't have a direction associated with it. It's sort of a property of an object around a certain axis. Um, the unit is kilogram meter squared, because it depends both on the mass and the distance from how the mass is distributed with respect to the axis. There is a formal way to calculate the moment of inertia of any object, but it involves lots of calculus. So we're just going to give you a few of the standard moments of inertia. So one is for a mass in a circle. So if we think of uniform circular motion, we had a mass here, and we've thought a lot about this case where you have a string that is slinging the mass around. You have some tension, applies a centripetal force, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you wanted to identify the moment of inertia, I'm sorry, the rotational inertia of this, it would be that I equals um, the mass m times the radius of the circle squared. I equals m r squared, like that. That's a two. There we go. I equals m r squared. But different geometries get more complicated than just I equals mr squared. Let's look at a solid cylinder. Solid cylinder, let's see. So I'm going to draw it kind of like this, like that. And it has a radius. Again, we'll use big R. And again, we'll say it has a mass m. Okay. And you can ask, what is the moment of inertia of that cylinder? And I would tell you, I can't tell you. I don't know because it's not well defined. You can't give the moment of inertia of an object. An object does not have an inherent moment of inertia like it has an inherent mass. It has a moment of inertia about an axis of rotation. So since I didn't give you the axis, you can't say what the moment of inertia is. You have to have the axis. So we'll do the axis that you probably assumed I meant, which is along the cylinder like that. Once you specify an axis, then you can give a moment of inertia. And if we did the calculus, we would find it's 1 half m r squared. Why is it a half? You got to do the calculus. Only way to know. If we did a stick, uh, here's a, basically a thin cylinder, right? A stick of uh, mass m and length l. So m here, l here. And we assume it's thin relative to its length. It has no, it essentially has no radius. It's like a thin stick. Moment of inertia. Don't know yet. We have to specify the axis of rotation. So if we're going to spin the stick down the center like that, I is 1 12th ml squared. Uh, ml squared in this case. 1 12th. Like that. A 12th. Why so low? 
Well, you guys think about how close is the mass to the axis, that brings it down. A lot of the mass is close here. And also we use the length instead of radius. And that gets squared. So that makes the 1 12th pretty low. But again, calculus is the only way to really know. And then finally, a solid sphere. All right. If I show you a solid sphere and say of radius big R, and say, what is the moment of inertia? You say, I can't tell you because it depends on the axis of rotation. You might say, well, it's symmetric. The axis of rotation doesn't matter. It does matter, because I could give you the moment of inertia about this axis. Right? It could be going around an axis. It could be this. Okay? So the moment of inertia of a solid sphere also depends on the axis. And let's say it's an axis through the center. And as soon as you know it's an axis through the center, then there is one and only one formula. And that is, if it has mass m i, equals two-fifths m r squared. So you can see, in terms of units, they're all a mass times a distance squared, a mass times a distance squared, because they all have to be in kilogram meter squared. But the details depend on the geometry and depends on the axis of rotation. So we aren't, in this class, going to derive these. We're just going to show them to you. And whether or not you need to memorize them is kind of depends on your class and what kind of a test you're taking, whether how the details at which you need to know them. Usually this one, MR squared, for a point mass moving around, and this one for a cylinder is usually enough. And you can, you can get most problems done with those two.